Alright, what's up guys? This is Jonathan from Rev Free Moto. I'm uh at the county line, Madison County and Rappahannock County. In front of me here is the road to Old Rag Mountain. It is a very famous climbing mountain in the area. And, uh, fun fact, my wife and I went on one of our very first dates to this all-day climb. Uh, do a quick walk around on the bike. She's a little dirty. Hit some rain earlier. I wiped it down what I could, but it's still pretty filthy. Look at that. Uh. Oh, I found out this swing arm bag is not waterproof at all. So luckily I had nothing of major importance in there. But welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rev Free Moto. My sun visor down. Not a lot of sun today. Hit some rain earlier, obviously, but Beautiful day to be out riding. It's beautiful. So I hope you're having a good day. Um, Sinker 
not a new rider, if you've been riding for a couple of years, if you've never taken that MSF, make sure I say it right this time, motorcycle safety class, uh, that is an excellent class. I still use things today that I learned in that class. Uh, for example, when I approach an intersection, um, in a, uh, where the a busy intersection, or a car might pull out in front of me, I always try to cover the brake because I might have to react. Um, so that's number one, tip number one. Tip number two is, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but if you, if you only watch a video for this long, I want you to I want you to know these, these two very important things. Take that MSF course, but also number two, Ride like you're invisible, like you are a ghost. Ride with the expectation that no one sees you. That no one sees you, because if you, if you assume that everybody sees you and you ride like that, then it's really going to surprise you when your first car pulls out right in front of you and doesn't even see you. And then you have to panic and react. If you've been riding any uh, length of time, you've had somebody pull out in front of you, you've had somebody change lanes in front of you, um, it's scary. So the, the trick is to be ready for it, to expect it. And how do we, how can we be ready for it? license. There's that old acronym S-I 
exactly what I'm talking about. I said that he was past it. He was following extremely close. And so I'm going 55 miles per hour, the speed limit. Here's the passing zone. And he couldn't wait for the legal passing zone. He passed me on the double yellow. That doesn't really surprise me because of the, how closely he was following me. Um, and so, you know, there was a day I, I might have gotten mad about that, but I'm just glad he didn't hit me, you know, at, at this point. So always assume that you're invisible to everyone. When you see a bigger ve vehicle, go back to what I was... So going back and forth in the lane like that, just increases the chances that that driver is going to see you as you're approaching them um, instead of just staying straight on. A bigger vehicle like that horse and trailer that just passed us or a dump truck or a tractor trailer, that's something that I'm going to creep over just a little bit and give them some extra space. And it's not that like I'm afraid they're going to come over. I mean, that could happen, right? That could happen. It could be uh, looking at a phone or a map or a G I mean a GPS map or whatever, and they could come over into my lane a little bit. And if if that happens and I'm hugging the the double yellow line, then I have zero reactionary gap, and that might be the end of the end of it. So a larger vehicle, especially, or around a blind curve, you know, I try to get over a little bit possible um, just in case something does happen now, another reason to get over with a larger vehicle a dump truck a tractor trailer is if they're hauling something and there's something kicks out out of that dump bed and you know spins in your direction uh, number one uh, maybe you'll miss getting hit if you're further over in the lane get hit you know it's gonna be at like you know whatever speed that vehicle's going so 55 whatever I don't want to get hit with a rocket that speed it's one of the reasons I mostly always wear a, a full face helmet nowadays so that's a good segue into protective gear another way that we can protect ourselves out here and trust me, if it's a hundred degrees, I'll be—I'll admit I am the first one to shed the the jacket. But I always wear jeans. Um, I do have some armored jeans. I need to get some better ones because the ones that I have. Uh, if 
possible a jacket with some armor it's a good idea that way if you if you do crash you slide on the pavement less likely to uh, sustain burns like pavement burn or uh, road rash or whatever you want to call it it's the town little town of madison virginia here
light that I stick on the back of my helmet, the throw of a picture of one, um, and it's an incredible safety product. Everybody that I have ridden uh, in front of say how amazing they think it is, uh, and it's not terribly expensive. It's under two hundred dollars, and it lasts for hours and hours. You can ride all day with it on a single charge. But it sticks to your helmet and it lights up when you slow down. Not just hitting the brakes, but uh, engine braking as well. You know, the, one of these motorcycles, you downshift, to, you slow yourself down with the engine. And uh, just slowing down with the engine right, you know, right now, just letting off the throttle. The brake free is going it has an accelerometer in it, and it's gonna it's going to detect that and it's gonna light up. I slow down. So even if I'm not hitting the brakes, I'll say the brakes on a motorcycle are low. Like from a car driver's perspective, they're way down low. But if you, the brake free is up on the top and back of my helmet, it's way closer to eye level for somebody driving in a car or an SUV. And they're much more likely to see it and catch their attention. So that's just a couple of reasons that I wear a full face helmet. Uh, some other tips, never ride in somebody's blind spot. So this blue car up here, you know, right about right here, they don't know I'm here at all. I mean, maybe my pipes, right? But that car doesn't have a um, one of the turn suit, the mirror indicator is saying that there's something in their blind spot, blind spot mirror indicators. So, don't if you're gonna have to pass somebody, don't stay in that blind spot for long. That's a good way to. Uh, that's just a danger zone. something you look at something 
outside of the curve to the inside of the curve back to the outside right. do that again all right so outside of the curves over here starting out on the outside going to the inside guys what's up that uh last video 
the GoPro camera died right as I was getting ready to do my outro. So uh, just wanted to go over a couple things. First of all, thanks so much for watching and uh, really enjoyed going over those safety tips with you all. And if you have any safety tips uh, that I may have missed, please drop those in the comments uh, for, for all of us to read and to, to better our own safety knowledge. Um, one thing that I did forget to talk about was, uh, you know, being safe and being seen on the bikes. You know, you can upgrade on your motorcycle. You can upgrade your headlight to LED if you have a halogen headlight. You can update your, uh, or upgrade your tail lights and your brake lights to LED. That may help uh, make them brighter and for better safety. So just stuff like that. If you have some good tips that you want to share, please uh, drop them in the comments. I'd uh, love to hear from you. Uh, this uh, shows the importance of a full face helmet. Uh, this actually is uh, not a uh, crash, um, this damage here. Uh, this, this helmet is a hel helmet that I had for several years. I think I got it in 2015 and I'd had it for five years and I used this uh, helmet as a prop in my movie. Um, and when we, when I uh, used it as a prop, I did everything I could do to make it look like it had been in a crash. And I slammed this HJC entry level, probably $150 helmet um, into the concrete, into the asphalt. As hard as I could, I dragged it around. I smashed it over and over and over again onto the hard uh, concrete, trying to break it, trying to crack this visor, and nothing would make this helmet break. I mean, maybe a sledgehammer, I, I don't know, but um, it, would, it took a beating, and it's still, uh, I don't know if it still will open and close. I think I have it. Oh yeah, look, I mean, so, if I replace the visor, I could probably still, I don't know that I would recommend riding with it. I guess you could still ride with it, but I have an HJC R, ARFA 70 uh, uh, ST now, RPHA, I'm not sure how you say it, but um, definitely a, an upgrade, but this was still a great helmet. So, uh, for, you know, less than uh, $200, you can get an excellent uh, helmet that will hold up and, and keep you safe. Remember, um, you don't want to put a $10 helmet on your head if your head's worth more than $10, right? Um, so if you haven't subscribed to Rev Free Moto, please subscribe. I'm so thankful for your subscription and hit that like button. That really helps me out too. So God bless guys. Uh, thankful for you all and we'll see you in, in the next video.